To Eba were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we continue to read in Genesis chapter 10. We've had an outline of the descendants of Japheth, who established the European nations, the Russian nations, those north and west of Mesopotamia. We've read of the families of Ham, which went down into North Africa, Egypt and Ethiopia and Libya. The last phrase of that, Mizraim begot Ludin, Ananim, Mihal, Nefushan, Fathrushan, Kalusan, and from these came the Philistines and Captorum. What we have here is an identification of the source of the Philistines, who were a big thorn in the side of the Israelites in the time of the kings, one and a half thousand years later. What we find is most incredible in the scriptures is that God caused to be written by the early writers things that were important for the story later on because God ultimately is the author of the scriptures and the people who wrote didn't necessarily understand why God chose to include particular information in their writings and other material was left out. Uh, Peter tells us in his chapter 1 how the prophets of old struggled to try and understand the things that they were writing because they weren't writing for themselves, they were writing for us. God has given us a comprehensive account causing to be written in these early days material which laid a solid foundation for the later material. So here we have the identification of the source of the Philistines. As we move to verse 15, we have the family of Canaan, who was the son of Ham, who was cursed. And they are particularly relevant to the story of Israel because the Israelites were given their land. We'll take up our reading again from verse 15 of chapter 10. Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebusites, the Amorite, and the Girgashite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite, the Arvadite, the Semirite, and the Hamathite. Afterward, the families of the Canaanites were dispersed, and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as you go toward Gerar, as far as Gaza, and as you go toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Admar, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These were the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, and in their nations. And children were born also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. The sons of Shem were Elam, Asher, Aphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram were Uz, Hul, Getha, and Marsh. Aphaxad begot Salah, and Salah begot Eber. To Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan begot el Madad, Shalaf, Hazarah, Moveth, Jerah, Hadaram, Uzel, Dikla, Obel, Jemael, Sheba, Ophah, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. And their dwelling place was from Mesha as you go towards Sepha, the mountain of the east. These were the sons of Shem, according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These were the families of the sons of Noah, according to their generations, in their nations. And from these the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. And may the Lord bless his word to us. Well, first of all, the Canaanites. It was the land of Canaan from Sidon in the north to Gaza in the south that was given to the Israelites. And so we still know the name of Sidon and the name Gaza. And of course, that included the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know those names and that territory as the Salt Sea. This was land that the Canaanites occupied, 
but subsequently was given to Abraham's descendants and to the Israelites. And another name that was mentioned here is that of Heth. Abraham had dealings with the sons of Heth when it came to buying some land as a burying place for Sarah. Now concerning the children of Shem, the first one that is mentioned is Eber, and Eber gives rise to the name Hebrews, for the language of Eber is Hebrew, and the suggestion of some is that indeed because the judgment of the next chapter on the languages fell on the cities of Babel, that it is entirely possible that the original language of the world before the flood was Hebrew, that Shem spoke and passed down through his line. Definitely the name Hebrew comes from Eber. So Shem had sons, Elam, which was the territory east of Persia, Asher gave rise to the name Assyria, and we've already mentioned that in relation to Nineveh, for the Assyrians were based in that area. We have the name Uz, Hul, Githa, Marsh, these nations, and we're told that these people moved east. So these gave rise ultimately to the Asian people, particularly the name Ofa is associated with the Chinese people and the people of the east and the trading that was done towards the east. Now, a key fascinating phrase is this one. To Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided. And the word divided can mean separated, it can mean surveyed, yeah, so that when you move into a territory and lay out the plots and allocate people to particular pieces of land, it has that thought of um, divided. Now, after the flood, as I've mentioned, during the Ice Age, the sea levels were low, and there's ample evidence of that in many places, so that gave land bridges and land links for many people to move around to settle the various continents and countries. But afterwards, the sea rose. So that would have provided a dividing of the earth so that it was no longer kind of connected, but it became disconnected because the sea levels increased the distances between continents and lands and islands. And the sea level is slowly still increasing, and it's changed over the period of time, but at that particular time it was a relatively rapid increase. And uh, it's fascinating to see in the Gulf of Bengal the evidence of the erosion from the Himalayas way out to sea, but it's now underwater because the sea levels have risen. Particularly in Peleg's day, then, something very dramatic happened on the earth. Well, we're told these are the sons of Shem according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. So all of the families of Shem, Ham and Japheth were divided into different language groups. Uh, the cause of that is seen in the next chapter and were allocated territory and lived in their territory. So we have the families of the sons of Noah according to their generations in their nations and from these the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. So God's plan was that these people should be divided into nations, into territories, and that within their territories they should live at peace, and of course live at peace between nations. But it is obviously not so.